Hello and welcome to the Full Stack Web Development course by Eduonix. My name is Brad Traversy and I'm here to tell you about our biggest course yet, packed with literally everything that you need to know to be able to build websites, create front-end user interfaces, create back-end APIs, and database-driven applications. So a full stack web developer is someone that has the knowledge and the ability to work on both the front end and the back end of an application or an API. It eliminates the need for having multiple developers designated to the front and back ends of a project and this makes you worth more as a developer. So we split the course up into five essential categories, front end technologies, back end database systems, other essential technologies, and even debugging and version control software. So for the front end, we're going to jump in and start with the, the core basics of HTML, so tags, attributes, lists, forms, uh, the basic building blocks of any website or application UI. Then we'll start on HTML5 and learn some of the newer HTML tags, such as header and footer. We'll learn about the more advanced aspects, such as canvas, web storage, and geolocation. Once you've mastered the markup, we'll start talking about styling and CSS, so things like backgrounds, borders, margin and paddings, up to CSS3 transitions. We'll also have a section on Twitter Bootstrap, which is an extremely popular CSS and HTML framework, which uses a grid system to map out UIs, along with a ton of CSS and JavaScript components. So after that, we'll jump into JavaScript and talk about things like conditionals, arrays, loops and then we'll take it a step further and get into jQuery which is a really popular library to simplify many areas of JavaScript. Alright so for backend technologies we'll start with Node.js which allows us to run JavaScript in a backend server environment. We'll get that set up and start using NPM which is node package modules. Uh, there's thousands of different modules and add-ons that can be used with Node.js. We'll also take a look at Meteor.js, which runs on both the front and the back end on top of Node.js. And it even includes MongoDB on both the front and back ends. MongoDB is a NoSQL database, and we'll get into that later on as well. Angular is technically a client-side JavaScript framework, but I thought it fit better in this section. It allows us to separate our application into components with their own classes and functionality we'll be using Angular 2, which is the latest release. We'll also look at the PHP programming language. PHP is a server-side language that lets you do pretty much anything. We'll talk about the basics of arrays, functions, loops, and then we'll get into some more advanced stuff like object-oriented programming. Finally, we'll learn about Ruby on Rails, which is a popular server-side framework that runs on the Ruby programming language. Ruby on Rails is great for prototyping and getting applications up and running very quickly. So databases are a huge part of web development. They're used to persist and store data of all kinds. We'll start with MySQL and Postgres, which are both relational databases. Uh, they both use the structured query language. In addition to relational databases, we'll also get into NoSQL databases, MongoDB being the most popular. Um, the structure of a NoSQL database is much more flexible and dynamic than relational databases. And we'll get into that, we'll get to compare this as we move along. We'll also talk about CouchDB and Apache Cassandra, which are also NoSQL databases. We have some other essential technologies that we'll talk about, so Memcached and Redis are caching systems that tempor temporarily store data. Uh, they're used for storing data without having to deal with the load of a database, although Redis does have the option to work like a NoSQL database. Uh, we'll also have Apache Lucene, which is a full-featured text engine library written in Java, suitable for applications that use full-text search. And then Apache Solar, which is used to uh, used for things like indexing, replication, and querying. And then finally we'll get into version control systems like Git and Subversion so we can properly track and save our projects. 
we'll take uh, we'll take a look at some of the different debugging software like xdebug which helps finds issues in our programming all right so you can see that this is a front to back web development course and it's geared to give you pretty much everything you need to get started being a full stack web developer so thanks for watching and i will hopefully see you in the first video